Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here. As many of you know, over the past month or so, I used OpenSUSE KDE as my main desktop distro. And while the experience was generally a positive one, I was ready to move on to something else. Now, this isn't to say that I won't return to OpenSUSE at some time in the future. Uh, in part, I'd really like to try out both XFCE and GNOME Shell on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed but it was time to move on and try out something else. Now, I had quite a few people that asked me to use Anagos as my daily driver, and since it had been some time since testing it, uh, you know, it sounded like a pretty good idea. Unfortunately, Anagos was a total disaster on my system. Apps crash randomly in both the desktop and apps tended to freeze and uh, lock up after extensive use. So uh, since I was unable to troubleshoot the issue, uh, Anagros is out as my daily driver. Uh, as a side note, I did receive quite a few comments blaming the Anagos issue on the GNOME Shell desktop and you know everybody was saying oh, XFCE is a much better choice and much more stable choice. So over this past weekend I tested that theory out on my system. Unfortunately XFCE is just as bad as the GNOME Shell. Personally, I think this is a Radeon driver issue, but I really couldn't pinpoint it down. Uh, so that's just kind of an educated guess. So where does that where does that lead us? That takes us to my new primary OS, which is now Solus. Now I've used Solus on my laptop on and off over the past year or so, uh, but this is the first time that I made it my primary desktop OS. Now. I'm sure a lot of you are asking why I made Solus my primary OS. You know, it's a relative newcomer to the Linux world. You know, blah blah blah. Okay, there, there. Now there's a whole multiple multitude of reasons why I'm making the switch. But let me start by talking about the software. The developers have taken the time to make sure that everything in the repos runs well on Solus, and that's something you really can't say for all distros out there. In fact, there's a lot of them that you can't say that about. Yeah, there are quite a few distributions that have a much more extensive software selection, um, but I'm sure that a lot of you are like me and, and feel this way. I would rather see a smaller assortment of apps that are optimized to run well on my system as opposed to a ton of applications that may run well, may have mediocre performance, and may just crash, you know, and, and are complete disasters. Um, while talking about software, there's two other points I want to make. First, the software selection has really grown over the past year, and I think for most users, you will find just about everything you want here. One thing, they, ugh, I can't talk today. <laughs> One thing I I do think they need to add is the Chromium browser, although I, I do want to point out that Chrome, uh, it, that is available through the third-party repo, just not Chromium. Um, second thing is that if there is a piece of Linux software that you don't see in the repos, just ask for it. The Solus team actually listens to the users, which is part of what led me to adopting Solus as my main desktop. Now, I'm sure many of you have noticed the new opening and closings to my videos, as well as the animations that I've, I've set up for running across the bottom of the screen. Now, I created those using Inkscape for the drawing part, you know, to, to draw the, uh, the, the, the blocks and the text and whatnot. And then I used Synfig Studio for the animation. So going to Solus, Inkscape was already in the Solus repos, Synfig was not. So I filed a software request the following day, Synfig was in the unstable repository. About a day later, Synfig was in the stable repos. Now, the fact that I am a Linux YouTuber and a few of the developers know who I am may have carried some weight on that, uh, or maybe not, I, I don't know, but the fact that the Solus team took the time to jump on my software request definitely gets two thumbs up in my book. 
Another reason for the switch to Solus is the focus on the desktop. Now, a lot of distros try to be everything to everyone. Um, you know, as an example, you, uh, Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, and a bunch of other distros, there's development resources that are split between desktop and server development. Uh, you, you're not going to have that with Solus. In Solus, the uh, singular focus is to create a great desktop experience. So for the end user, this means that all the apps run well, boot times are quick, and everything works well right out of the box. Now back when I was on OpenSUSE, some of you probably remember I talked about the very long boot times. Now the main culprit responsible for the long boot time was the networking utility, uh, Wicked, which was configured to be more of a, a server networking, networking utility than for a desktop. You're not going to run into that Solus. Solus is focused on the desktop. Solus developers have also tweaked the open source video drivers for better performance. Uh, a lot of you on G Plus know that I was about ready to replace my AMD video card now that the Catalyst driver is pretty much dead, uh, at least on any rolling release. Now, yeah, you can go and add it to some rolling releases, but that's going to require the user to downgrade to an older version of Xorg. Uh, something I really don't want to get into because it can lead to all kinds of other problems, especially when you're updating your system. Uh, but anyway, on Solus, the open source Radeon driver has been tweaked so that it's good enough that I'm willing to stick with my current card. Now, there have been some recent updates to Budgie, which is the default Solus desktop environment, and some of these changes are what kind of seal the help seal the deal for me to uh, make the switch to Solus. Now, I'm not going to cover all of the changes in the new version. Um, the version number, by the way, is now 10.2.7. I will, however, leave a link down below in the description so that if you want to read the Solus blog post talking about the, uh, the version improvements, you can go and check that out. Uh, for me, the most significant improvement was with the applets. Previously, the panel applets were a mix of left and right clicks. Uh, now, all of the actions are left click, so you don't need to memorize all this applet. Uh, you know, needs left click, this one needs right click, you know, so on and so forth. Um, there's also new pop-up dialog boxes for quick access to, uh, to various settings. So um, let me do a little demo here. You can see some of that. The most important of these, at least for me, is the power button pop-up. I used to power down my machine by clicking the power button, which would open Raven, which is that, that sidebar thing. And then at the bottom of Raven, there is a power button there. I'd click it and then have to go and select, you know, power off or, or, or sleep or whatever you want to do. Now it's a simple click of the power button and there's your power options right there. Boom, you're done. You know, you can log out, whatever. Uh, while I'm on the subject of Raven, it now has its own applet to open it, and so you can open and click Raven by clicking that, and you can you can either click that icon again or that applet again, or anywhere else on the screen to close it up. So all these improvements lead to Solus becoming a very refined desktop, great desktop experience, and really that's why I made the switch. Not that there aren't some useful features that I'd like to see. Uh, user defined hot corners be nice uh, being able to set up the window snapping to my specifications that'd be pretty cool uh, I'd also like to be able to put a panel at the top of my secondary monitor but having said all that I'm finding that having less options makes me more productive now, a lot of you know that I really like KDE because it's the king of desktop options but at the same time I've found that on KDE, I'm not as productive, and I think that's because I'm always tweaking the desktop. Um, with Solus, I'm not doing that. 
Um, while I'm on the subject of other desktops, Solus now has alternative desktops available. Currently, you've got GNOME Shell, Mate, and the i3 Window Manager. Uh, and also, while I'm on that subject, I'll be doing some future tutorials showing how to install some of those. In fact, I was actually planning on installing GNOME Shell on my main distro or my main desktop since it's a longtime favorite. But I decided I would stick with Budgie at least for a while. Um, and then maybe switch over to Gnome Shell later on just to do a comparison, see what I like, that sort of thing. You know, uh, decide which is the, the king of Alex's desktop, I guess. Um, one last thing before I end this video. Since I want to see uh, Solus development continue, I now donate to the project each month, each month through their Patreon page. Uh, you know, I'm not going to notice the $5 a month. Uh, that I'm donating you know that's less than a value meal at McDonald's but if more Linux users donated to their favorite distros their favorite open source project I think development rates would skyrocket um, you know remember that just because you didn't pay a dime for that distro doesn't mean it's free and you know what better way to show your appreciation for a distro or a, a specific piece of open source software than throwing a few dollars at it and uh, well I think that about finishes this video up as always leave comments questions all that kind of stuff down below I'll try to get to it as soon as possible if you're not a subscriber please subscribe and I hope to see you all on my next video thanks a lot